Hey guys, welcome back to the channel today. I've got something really super exciting to share with you and it came up randomly about a week ago and it is in this box. I don't do unboxing videos uh, because so many other people do them. I think my last one was actually a Benven unboxing video uh, and it was, I think it was about the Game Boy Color. But uh, this one is also about the Game Boy Color, which is not really a surprise to anybody. But this is about something I'm super passionate about. It's something I've been searching for for a long time. And so I'm just hoping that when I open this, the parts aren't all loose because that has actually happened before. No! No! Anyways, let's go ahead and get into this and see what we've got. So let's see what we have here. Um, got a few different things in here. Oh, all right, so they're not loose um they're just oh shoot no they kind of are are they all literally wrapped in the same uh when you guys ship stuff just pro tip don't put everything together in uh, i hate that anyways this makes it a little bit easier i think to find what i'm looking for so let's uh, nothing in there that we need I think I need my scissors. Oh, I think when people do this. All right, got a CPU three board. Um, now all these boards are dead. Um, they're not working or they're in non-working condition, but um, my plan is to fix them and restore them back to working order. They look mostly complete and intact with power switches and everything. That looks in really good shape. Well, everything else actually is kind of irrelevant because I found the thing that I am looking for. This is probably just another Game Boy Color board to anyone else. Let me actually move all this out of the way. This probably looks like a typical Game Boy Color board to anybody else, but it is actually something far more special than that. This is a CPU version one Game Boy Color board. This looks to be in pretty mint condition. Now there's six CPU versions, one, two, three, four, five, and six. I have versions two through six, but I've never been able to get my hands on a version one. With shipping cost, I paid about, oh, I hate to admit, about $200. $200 US for this box of boards. Uh, they all actually look to be, let me pull out a couple more here. They all look to be in really good shape. Uh, this one is missing a uh, speaker but they all look to be in really good shape here. Now, I don't know how common these are, uh, this version of board is throughout the world. I know that different versions of the CPU um, were released to different regions. This version is probably more common in other places in the world, uh, just not in the US, but I have never seen one. Now, just to show how uncommon these are, as of right now, the Console 5 website doesn't even have the chip info for the version CPU 01 uh, board. It's just non-existent right now on their page. Let's go through comparing the differences of this board to the other ones. Um, I don't think that there's all that many. Looking at it, most of these versions are the same relatively. I think the only major one I see on this backside is Everything here looks to be in the same location. I don't think they moved any of the components, the surface mounted components um, down here uh, from version one to version, this is version three. But I do notice that this ground test point is now moved from up here to down here, which I think it's the same on pretty much all other versions. Here's the CPU version five board that has the ground test point right there as well. Uh, let's flip this over and see what's different on the front which is not very much. It looks like actually on the version one, the DC-DC converter is a little bit more narrow. That's pretty much all I can think of, except, oh, that's right. So if you look at this Game Boy here, this one is a version, CPU version five. Now I can tell that because if I actually look in here, underneath the spring, you see that it says the CPU version down there. It says 05. So I revealed this in one of my other videos. 
uh, from actually a couple years ago. I think I was the first one to really bring this trick to light. You notice that there. Now if you take a look at the CPU version 1, I'm going to stick it inside this shell here. Alright, so if you check this out, you look on the bottom of underneath the negative battery terminal here in the back of this board, you'll see that there's no number there. CPU version 01 is blank. There's an identifier there, it's, I think it says 1 dash, yeah, 1 dash 2, but the CPU version is blank. It's just not there at all. Now at first glance, I can't really see any other differences between CPU version 1 and the other CPU versions um, here at all. So let's go ahead and test this thing out, see what's wrong with it, fix it up, and put it in its own shell as a working Game Boy again. Pardon the sound quality of my commentary for the first part of this video. I messed up my audio on my studio mic, so I had to use the audio from my camera. Anyways, I tested all 9 of the Game Boy Color boards that I had gotten in the package, and I was somewhat surprised to see that most of them actually powered on at the first try. The CPU-01 board was no different, and I found that it worked under AC power and battery power. Since that was the case, I decided to get out a spare LCD to hook it up and make sure that the system board would actually produce an image on the screen. Much to my surprise, it actually did. Amazingly, I would have a perfectly running Game Boy Color board if it wasn't for just one problem. The board won't seem to boot any game cartridges, and will shut off almost immediately with them inserted in the cartridge slot. I suspected that what I thought was a blob of solder bridging the ground and reset pins on the cart slot was the cause of this problem. However, that ended up being a capacitor, and it's there for a very good reason. It slightly delays the reset line at CPU startup, and it was likely installed by Nintendo Service Center. It was common for some early Game Boy Colors to have problems booting games on the first try, which this capacitor is intended to help fix. Needless to say, it ended up not being the problem, and the board still won't run any games. I then started probing around the board with my multimeter, and I tested the three voltage out rails coming from the DC-DC converter. All three seemed to be okay, with nothing strange appearing to be going on, so I turned the board over and put it under my microscope, and I found that the capacitor at location C35, which is part of the display output VCOM circuit, had the wrong tolerance capacitor on it. The one installed was a 22 microfarad 8 volt capacitor. This isn't the end of the world, but it's supposed to be at least a 16 volt capacitor. So I set to work replacing it with the correct one. For good measure, I tested the board with the game again, and we're still seeing the same problem. Something electronically is wrong with how this system supplies power once it's under load, so I checked the DC-DC converter board again. Sure enough, the second time I looked at it, I realized that the board is missing a 47 kilo ohm resistor. It's supposed to look like this one here. This is the resistor missing at this location, seen on another converter board. Since I didn't have any 47k resistors lying around, I decided to transplant the entire converter from a CPU-02 board. These boards are relatively interchangeable between the different Game Boy Color revisions, so this shouldn't cause any further problems and we shouldn't have any compatibility issues. With the transplanted converter board in place, I reattached the display, put in a test cartridge, and fired up the Game Boy. This time, thankfully, the board did power on with the game in it. This actually revealed another interesting thing about this Game Boy Color board. Since the title screen for my flash cart is all garbled, it seems that the CPU on this board is from even earlier in the Game Boy Color's life than I initially thought, since the display code for the title and menus in the firmware on this flash cart don't really work. They weren't written to support this early CPU. I'll have more info on this in a second. 
At any rate, I was able to start up and run Super Mario Bros. Deluxe for my flash cart. I next reinstalled the capacitor between the reset and ground cart slot pins, which I had removed earlier out of not knowing what it was. After that, I tested the system board with Pokemon Blue to make sure that all is still well with it post repair. The final thing to do is to build a working Game Boy Color again with this board. I had a spare original berry shell, so I decided to put it into that. As I put it together, I carefully cleaned every piece of the system before installing it into the console shell, doing my best to make sure that there wasn't any dust or debris anywhere. I tried to remove any that I could see. In the end, this Game Boy lives to see another day. And finally, my Game Boy Color collection is now complete, and I have a system for each of the six CPU revisions, each in their own launch color shell. Speaking of collecting, after filming the first part of this video, I was actually able to get my hands on another CPU-01 Game Boy Color board. What are the odds? My plan is to actually send one of these out to my friend Rourke in California, so that he can add it to his collection. It will be much better off there with him, rather than living in someone's daily driver Game Boy. I would like to thank my friend Benven for his help with identifying this board. To put it simply, these CPU-01 boards are not exactly super valuable, except to collectors. Ben equated it to finding old Apple hardware, like old Macintosh computers and such. To the layman, it's just junk, but to the collector, it can be like striking gold. Also, when using Ben's El Cheapo Game Boy Flash Cart in this video, this is what it's supposed to look like when you boot into it. The firmware on my flash cart hasn't been updated lately, which would likely fix this problem, though I haven't confirmed that myself. His cartridge works on most other Game Boys though, and I regularly use mine for testing systems as I repair them. So definitely check this thing out on his website if you get the chance. I've put a link to his store page in the description below. Guys, thanks so much for watching. Finding and restoring this Game Boy was super fun, and I hope that you enjoyed this little adventure with me. Let me know what you think of this style of video in the comments as well. Anyhow, if you liked this video, you know what to do. Hit the thumbs up button below and consider subscribing to my channel for more content like this in the future. As always, you all stay awesome and I'll see you in my next video.